Welcome one and all, I'm Decoy, and I'm back with even more cool and unique camp locations. Locations that have workbenches, containers, structures, all that kind of stuff. This first location is in the forest. Pick up some Nuka-Cola Quantum while you're here. There's not a whole lot going on here, and it's not that large of a structure. But of course it does come with a bed. A roof over your head, some purified water, baseball grenades, and some other random junk. Now, the real important thing is what's behind the house. Because sitting out back is a weapon workbench. Really nice. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Any free workbench is an awesome workbench. It's a good thing. Saves you a little bit of your camp budget. And this location will put you close to a train station, which again is pretty high up on my personal priority list. So that should be a fairly decent forest location for newer players. Now let's head into Toxic Valley, where I found a lovely little outdoor bar. Which when I originally found this location, it, it kind of shocked me. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to build a camp here. I want a bar at my camp. So you're going to have several tables and chairs set up for your outdoor dining experience. You also get a piano, which looked really out of place when I first found it. There's also going to be plenty of wood piles for you to pick up. Lots and lots of beer bottles. Oh yeah, beer bottles, liquor bottles. You're going to be set when it comes to glass. There's also a double barrel shotgun and some spices underneath the bar. But really, the thing that kills me about this is I want that bar at my freaking camp. I mean, my god. I'll pay 500 atoms for it. I don't know if I'd pay much more than that, but I would definitely give 500 atoms. I would put that in my bedroom because that's how I am it'll go right beside the race car bed so if you're wanting to live up here and have a free bar you will find it right up here and this does keep you close to the Grafton train station again I love being near a train station now we're heading down to the ash heap and while this location might not look it it is technically part of the ash heap and with this lovely little location you get an entire house to just play around with and enjoy and I have fond memories of this house from the beta I'll explain that in a second but of course you do have some clothing right here you go over to the little baby bed you're gonna find some adhesive and some other crap Oh, it's not called crap, it's called junk. My bad. But right in here. That, that bowler cap, that's where I got my very first one while playing the beta. Rocked it ever since. Also, that roach, really friggin' cool. I've named him Frank. Frankie the Roach. And of course, you do have a couple little medical things that you could loot right there in the bathroom. Free meds are always nice. Also have some building blocks. A TV that, you know, we can't actually place in our camps. A washer and dryer. There's a decent amount of stuff that you can actually get inside this house. I just wish the Mr. Handy's dead body wasn't always laying on the floor. Now, I wish we could get rid of that. Or better yet, I wish he was alive and friendly. Someday, someday maybe, we'll get friendly robots that we can legitimately have at any camp. Now, both porches do feature a decent amount of, of flat space where you could throw workbenches or whatever you may want. But this location was just awesome for the fact that you got the entire house. It also has nearby water, so if you set your camp up just right, you should be able to take advantage of the water and a decent amount of the house. Now you'll find this location 
right up here is between Camden Park and the Nuka Cola plant. And again, while it might not look like it's in the ash heap, it is technically part of the ash heap region. Except with the added bonus of uh, you're not going to have any respiratory problems. Now we're heading to the Savage Divide, where you can have your own refugee camp. Okay, it's not a refugee camp, but you can have a large camp. There's no way that you will be able to fit the entire camp area into your camp, but you could pick and choose and take a certain section of the camp and make that your own. Or you just set up your camp nearby and then come over here and just loot everything when it respawns. Because there's plenty of containers. As you saw, I just picked up a recipe. A lot of crap here. No other way to put it. A lot of junk you can scrap. Multiple containers to loot. There's a mod right there. There's just a lot here. I kind of wish it wasn't spread out so far. That way you could try to just adopt all of it at once. This this camp area, this is mine now. I own all these tents. I own all these cooking stations. This is Decoy's refugee camp. For the weary traveler who's met one too many Scorch Beast. Now over here you do have like some picnic tables, a free radio. I think that's right away. And then you do have the little toolbox that you can loot. Never know what you'll get. And of course you're going to have to have porta potties, all right? It's a necessity. So I feel like this location is pretty cool. It will keep you up near the most sought after workshop in the game in case you're someone that likes to make thieving runs now let's head into the mire where i found a location that looks really cool but it has a downside early on on my second character's playthrough i did move here and camped here for a few days until i i got bored of it now, you do get this awesome hangar. It's fenced in all the way around, except for where I came in. But sadly, this place is infested with ticks. And it will get old really quick. But there are wood piles. There's a decent amount that you can loot here. Like, when I moved my camp here, I tried to make it so my house was on top of this building. I didn't actually bother trying to live inside here. I did put turrets in here. You do get an armor workbench, which is it's pretty nice. But again, the ticks really suck, both literally and figuratively. You don't I, I highly doubt anybody's going to want to live here because of the ticks. Well, unless you just want to farm them, then that's awesome. Another thing that does kind of suck about this location is it's so cluttered with just too much stuff in your way. Like, occasionally you'll get stuck trying to walk past that table. And you can also get stuck trying to walk past, uh, I think that one as well. It's really weird. Like, there we go. At least I got to show you getting stuck. And it gets really old. And again, stuck again. Okay, screw it, just jump over the table. Now back here you will find a bed, a safe, a cooler. Of course I was thinking to myself, there's that TV again that we can't place. And overall, I mean, this isn't the most amazing spot ever. But if for some reason you need to farm ticks, they're going to be here. They will always be here. And they want to suck your blood. Okay then. Let's go ahead and move on. The only really solid thing about this location that I can say is that it's near Harper's Ferry. And making runs on the Harper's Ferry vendor is always good. Now to a location that I put a lot of thought into down in the Cranberry Bog. This is meant to be your unique camp location for doing endgame runs. 
and you get a lovely little cabin right here. Sadly, it's missing a decent amount of the roof. But it's okay. You do get some antlers, a rag stag head, a couple little wood piles indoors. There's not a lot inside this building. But I mean, you do get a cooler. There's a couple little containers that you can search. Not a whole lot. You do get two bunk beds, though, which is pretty cool. Now, the really key thing about this location is the teddy bear. All right, teddy bear, real important. All right, because you're living down here near Scorch Beast, you're probably going to need to cuddle up with that teddy bear just to make it through the night. It's terrifying. But no, literally, the, the important thing about this is out back, you do have a weapons workbench, and then... There is some more wood out here in case you need it. You also get your own little outhouse. Unfortunately, it's already occupied by someone who clearly did not cuddle up with the teddy bear to make it through the hard times. But this location should put you safely outside of the nuke blast when they happen, but still close enough to it that you could easily fast travel back to your camp and then make a run in for the end game so that's gonna wrap this one up i'll bring you more cool camp locations next week if there's anything you'd like to see on my channel please hop down in the comments and let me know and please remember to like sub and share later